Hey, welcome to Greenlight. My name is Giovanni Santos, and if you haven't subscribed here yet, please do so down below. Um, this is a live recording of uh, Blender 2.80, and this is going to be uh, the beginning, um, basically a beginner's uh, video, part one. Um, I may do a long one here live for you, and then um, uh, I might just download this and then chop it up and re-edit it so that each section is broken up for uh, beginners. Um, so we're going to get started right away. I'm going to show you some really cool things. This is all in light of, um, of uh, some new Blender news. So let's just get started right away, okay? So welcome. So um, again, my name is Giovanni Santos. Um, here taking care of my son. So just in case he comes in in any way, and we'll see how much we can get through in this video. It could be a very long video. Um, so good morning, and um, I will again. I will be chopping this up um, in sections. So um, for you live right now, let's quickly see here um, who could be online. If anyone's online, just go ahead and uh, and is watching me. Go ahead and uh, uh, talk in the in the live chat, and I'll give you a shout out throughout this video. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm trying to make sure the stream's strong. I'm not trying to be on the Wi-Fi on my phone as well, so. We could talk about Blender. All right, good. That's a stronger one. So, all right. So, first thing I want to show you is I'm going to show you uh, my screen here. And then you're going to see kind of the OBS platform. Everything that I talk about here is all technical stuff, but it's all in the description below. Um, so, this counts for all the other videos as well. Um, but basically, all the, everything I talk about here is in the description below, uh, fade in. So this is my back end of OBS. Um, so let's see. Uh, so I'm going to show you this real quick. This is uh, Blender. This is Blender's website, as you can see. And the great thing is, if you've seen my um, 2.79 beginners uh, video which is up here in the tab um, basically um, you couldn't see my cursor so now you should be able to see it with no problem um, well the first thing is here you can see you can download uh, the program I have and it's in the description below as well as uh, their beta version which is what I'm going to talk about real quick here if you go to blender.com and then you go into their download section, right? They have features, support, and then there's download. And then um, you could download the 2.80. But then if you want to try their experimental versions, um, last time I did a video about Blender uh, 2.80 being released. And now we're talking about how there's uh, 2.81 in beta and then 2.82 is an alpha right now um, can't say exactly what alpha means in that sense of like how far along they are with the, this one being a release uh, I think when um, they do announce a new release it's gonna be the 2.82 um, but the the 2.82 I'm not sure if this is where they're gonna stop um, I've heard that they've gotten here fairly quickly, so they've gotten to the 2.82 fairly fast, um, and some minor changes and stuff like that. I'm not sure exactly, but I'll I'll link in the description below one of their update videos from Blender themselves, um, talking about the 2.82 uh, version. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're gonna scroll down here. Let's see. I know there was like. Stay, look, stay up to date. So I think what they did, it had something to do with the nodes. And the nodes, um, which we may get into quickly in here, 
but um, uh, we'll just do like basic stuff here. Um, I'm trying not to go too far and beyond, but we'll see how much we do cover. But basically nodes are uh, a system uh, where you can um, add materials and textures and things like that. So let's see, let's go right into Blender real quick. And uh, this, this is the camera mode and then we can toggle easily we can toggle easily with that so if this is the render this is the final render then this is just um, um, I believe it's just like uh, the model mode it just it looks similar to the render and stuff like that but it's not um, making your computer um, show you everything so fast but Eevee is pretty good Eevee hasn't really like messed me up and, and Blender hasn't even messed me up on this on this computer um, it's slowed down certain things when it comes to maybe Premiere but that could be because uh, my wife downloaded some videos um, which is why I'm doing this whole live so then I can edit it real quick so I don't really like um, overdo my computer with a lot of um, a lot of data and, and stuff like that any raw files and stuff it usually takes up a lot of memory a lot of space um, it slows down the computer but this um, program doesn't necessarily do that exactly um, it will depending on how much work I do on blender and since I am planning in the future to do a lot of work on blender um, I'm gonna have to buy some Seagate um, um, portable hard drives so I can at least save everything in there um, so then that's out of the way I could even save uh, my Premiere Pro um, uh, workflow and all my edits in there as well so with that being said now we're I clicked on the camera so what we're gonna do is um, um, we're gonna see the camera mode real quick so if you see in the bottom how I move that on the side there grabbing this on the side here we can click over here look I opened up another window and it looks similar but they both have all the same features so if you see the camera mode here you can press it and it'll take you right into the camera so then you can have it on the side over here and then you can still work on stuff here so anytime you put your cursor over any of these windows it'll like move only that window and stuff like that so you see like I move it around and I'm kind of like out of the camera view now and that's not what I want this window to be so I'm gonna press the the camera um, button again and then you see this little arrow over here right over here on the side uh, it's gonna make it do this and I'm gonna click it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to this tab that says view and right over here I'm gonna give this a check mark and it's gonna lock all this if you see the little red dots on the sides of your frame here so now look at that if you can see to the left here on this window you can see how like my camera moves around exactly how this window moves around right so now I could even conduct a, a shot with this and then with um, control and then I scroll upwards I can go backwards and then scroll down like towards myself on my mouse I can get closer to the box you know I could dolly in so dolly out and then dolly in right so to get rid of this thing because this is kind of annoying just go to the side over here that should open and then just kind of close it up like that okay you could do the same with this a little bit there we go and even if you want um, to make it more like a full screen, let's uncheck this. And let's do that control button, but in this window. Okay, control, and then you do a scroll inwards. I mean, like, away from you. Like, if you scroll away from you, this is how it would, it would go away from you in the, in the view, but in the viewport. But then when you um, move the, the mouse towards you a little get this that's perfect right there and then yeah it, 
did that again. So let's just press this. And then it's all in full. So we'll just lock it in there. And that's how you lock the camera. Well, this, um, this screen right here to the camera. And then um, usually this is what I do. Then I tend to bring up another video screen right here. Make it more of like a square over here. And then I can grab it again and zoom in a little bit. All right. And then press lock again. Move this out of the way. And then I always turn this screen over here basically into my node editor. I can do a shader editor, texture node editor. And let's see, basically what I want to do, which one, I think it's, uh, it's just a UV, there's UV editor, it's image editor, and then I think I'm just gonna go with the simple texture node editor. So there's nothing I have selected here except for the camera. So nothing's really going to show up over here. So if I press the box, right, and then I go to this side over here, I can go to the world settings. And this is now the material, which is this box here. So I can give it a any kind of shader I want. Look at this surface's principal uh, BSDF shader. So a principal BSDF shader is basic for, you know, for coloring in and stuff like that and many other things too. So that's basically your start when it comes to that. And I'm not going to go too far into it so I can cut this up um, for beginners. Okay. So now, um, now that you know that and you see that kind of setup, I can go in here. Shift A. Hmm. I think it's in the shader editor. Yep, there we go. Did it wrong. So this in here has to be shader editor. So these are the three windows. I want to make sure that you uh, see, but I'm sure, uh, I hope that no one has gotten away from me in this part um, because I have gotten lost learning this many times. But, you know, I was learning it through 2.79 and people were um, putting up tutorials of 2.80 as well so it was hard not to look at those so it took a little bit for me to understand completely um, what I was doing and how to be able to explain it and uh, even understand how to do certain things and where certain things are at um, basically but I love this setup this was so much easier to learn than 2.79 um, basically in the show in the shader editor um, it'll open up if you click this little world right here and then you see it says material I haven't even pressed anything exactly except for this right here in shader editor so I put control and then I do another zoom in with my mouse right and then I can you know like go side by side with my mouse as well just like I can do with this window up and down side by side okay and then you know there's these things here too where you can maneuver um, as well but uh, we'll get into that in a second um, so this is what your basic node setup should be this is your material so um, without this it doesn't connect into the box okay so let's just make a quick change of color um, this is green light, so we'll do some green, okay, and then um, we'll add some more green over here in the, in the subsurface, make it a little darker, leave that there like that, okay, and then we'll go, instead of going over here, we'll make this r window a little render window, okay. And then we scroll, basically I scrolled all this with my mouse. Um, you can do a good amount of things with the mouse. So you see now I put in the render, and there we go. We got a green little box. Cool, right? 
So that's how you change the color on a box or any mesh that you put in here, which I'll show you how to bring in meshes. So now over in here in this section, um, we are going to talk about how we can um, move around in the cabin with these things here. So there's a uh, Z and then that's the exact opposite of Z, which is, uh, where, where is that? Yeah, it's just the bottom of Z. This is the Z axis, you know, and the bottom of it. And then this is the Y axis and then the X axis. Okay. So um, as you can see, that's the whole 3D. So the blue is, is invisible right now. It's right in between. It's like you know, like a cross, it's like literally a blend, the, um, the blue, you know, access is just straight up. It looks like Blender's uploading a test or something. Cool. Very nice. Um, okay, so that's that. And then you can, let's see, is it shift? Uh, well, let's go to edit mode. All right. Um, well, you know what, before that, let's just do some some quick um, shortcut keys real fast. So for before you go into edit mode and use everything with your mouse, you can do a lot of really cool stuff um, um, with, uh, with shortcuts. So I use certain things like R is like rotate, to rotate it. And then um, I right click it to snap it back to the way it was like almost like an undo. All right, you can right click it and then um, as long as it's selected orange like that, then I could press wherever my mouse is, I could press G and this goes with anything in there in here You can grab, grab it, move it around. Okay. And then I right click to snap it back um, for me to grab and move it. Um, I left click it to keep it wherever it is that I want to move it to. Um, that can happen, that can also happen with, um, when you do the rotation of, uh, of the object as well. Left click to keep it wherever you want it. Um, so let's undo quickly. So I command Z right now and I did all that. Undo, so basically you do the same with anything else. Um, so grab, move the light around. You see how it reacts to the object. See how it's super bright like that. To move that around. So if you can see it more in the render view on the on the right here. All right? And then I'm going to right click just to snap it back to where it used to be. And I can grab the camera to move it around, right? I could rotate it whoa really weird i'm gonna right click and snap it right back to where it was before so in a sense you can't really hurt this program <laughs> you could do a really a lot of really cool things with it so um, i have the light selected and then mm, let's see um the size work um let's let's select the the cube and let's press S. Okay. Ooh, where's my oh there. So I'm gonna bring my mouse closer. I gotta bring it in the window here. I gotta press S. Alright? And you see it gives you this thing here. And then when I move it farther away to the right, I'm just moving my mouse now to the right because that's where my mouse was. My little mouse cursor. Or I can move it to the left. Either way, you know, away from the object. Um basically makes it smaller I mean makes it bigger away from the object and bringing it back closer I can make it smaller that's pretty cool and to make it really big and you make it big you could put you know your camera inside of it let's just leave it in there let's see and then I put my mouse in here as you can see and I could scroll in there whoa that's kind of interesting you see this part here when you finish your renders and everything this little like 
this grid here I know you can change it around depending to what you want to see but those grids don't show up in the final renders okay and we'll do all that here we'll even do like some text stuff and show you some materials and um, there's an emission shader that I wanted to test out with you guys and maybe some letters on that um, let's see let's um, make this box smaller again okay and um, let's see what's the next thing let's um we're gonna go to object mode let's go to object mode okay so this is object mode and in object mode you're gonna see you're gonna get all these little like pointers and things like that um, I'm pressing control and I'm zooming in okay and I can oh I can just select this side right there and basically I can press G and grab that and maneuver it however I want to maneuver it uh, let's stretch it out and let's select this side here and let's grab it let's move it over there okay and then we can grab over here and then grab and then bring it up like that and let's zoom this camera out whoa way out too far out so you see automatically it looks like some emerald weird thing but it looks kind of strange it's not really anything i'm not a graphic design artist here exactly so a lot of my ideas are for my films and uh, short films and music video work so a lot of people that normally do this um i see a lot of just cg artists i don't really and gamers um and there's a lot of like potential cg artists that are going to work on films and stuff like that but i haven't seen anyone like myself that works with this program yet um so um, i hope this helps other people that are already thinking about doing that themselves and they're filmmakers and they've heard of this free program it's like free free like for free free so links in the description below don't forget how free this is okay so with um editor on we could do a bunch of really cool stuff you see all these menus little menus show up so we saw those already uh annotate measure extrude so extrude is with um with e so you can basically in edit mode if you see up here next to the edit mode this is more of like points right and then if you select this you can select any like edge like you see it's white there right there and then if you click that then you can get the orange you can just have one orange dot on these um, on these points and then if you want to select the face like I want to select this face but I want to I want to you know make it bigger I can press um, the E button um, shortcut and you see automatically automatically it gives me the blue line in the middle and then my cursor turned into whichever which way I wanted to go so I can go up so basically I could go in bring it to the side look at that that looks interesting too that's pretty interesting and then I can go up just go up all right all right that's weird it looks interesting all right so I can do that. I could even, if I wanted to, I could press that and then do something weird like press this thing and extrude that little point in there. You know what I'm saying? And it stays there. It's weird. Don't know what you would do with it just yet. But it did extrude at an angle. It extruded at an angle, so it's kind of interesting. Um, but. I'm just saying, like, the control in this is crazy. So, okay, let's see here. Um, now that I have, I'm just going to select the whole thing, right? And then shift to add 
this part too. Make sure the whole thing is selected. Okay, and I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna subdivide it, and subdivide it again, and subdivide it, and subdivide it. Okay, now, oh, I guess we'll get into the insert faces after. But quickly, I'm gonna bevel the edges, I believe. Um, okay, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here when it comes to that. But basically, let's just bevel it one, we'll, uh, um, we'll subdivide it just once. So you can right click to subdivide it and I subdivide it just once, okay? Um, and you can have it subdivided and basically um, with selected faces, you can select this face right here. And um, let's see, it's, it says shift ba space bar Y. Let's just. Mm. Uh, so you can scale that to. I mean, I know you could do that. I'm trying to insert the faces a little bit. But basically, with inserting faces, you can make it look more like a like a window, I guess, but this is like gonna be a really weird building. <laughs> There's some strange building here. All right, so now that I have it, oh, now that I have it selected, oh, that's how I do it. Oh, okay, so basically, once I select the face, then with my same left click button you left click again in the box and then you push in just like you would do Ooh. just like that and then go from far and then do that you see with this selected see now you can almost like cut in if you wanted to and then like let's just extrude it in you know what i'm saying and then look at that. So tell me what that look like. You see? Wow, right? 3D. Let's see what it looks like in the green. You can barely see it. Oh, look at how shiny this the sun is. Okay, so let's select this light. Let's do something else. Let's get a little experimental. Um, let's go to object mode. I'm sorry. We gotta go to object mode to select to jump around. And stuff so um, we're at the light here and then over here on the right you see where this little green light bulb is green light <laughs> um, you could select this as a point light a sun a spotlight or an area light so let's check out what each one of them does real quick um, well I feel like we are kind of moving ahead a little See, a little scattered brain, sorry guys. Um, sorry everybody on this, watching it now, but this is why I'm gonna edit it. Um, so let's go back to here real quick before we go into there. I think we should do that after. So um, I did some extruding and we did some inserting on the faces as well. Um, there's bevel. Um, little bevel is when you wanna like, let's see, let's grab this, and let's, uh, whoa, let's see, you can kind of bevel it, oof, that looks weird, okay, so, let's just, add in another box real quick for the bubble it looks like I'm sorry you can press shift and scroll up and down to be more fixed like that and then go in side by side 
So we'll go a little side and then control and zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to press shift A, right, to show up this window, shift A. So then you can bring in meshes, you can bring in lights, you could bring in basically everything with this button. Um, I guess you could bring in the speaker too, but that's another thing down below, down the line. Um, basically, you can move, um, you can move uh, water and um, simulate objects according to uh, songs and stuff like that, um, and music. So Shift A again, and we're going to bring in a cube. Okay, um, and this shows up always right wherever this little cursor is in here. Um, our selector tool is selected, so we're, we can select all of them and stuff like that. But uh, basically, basically, we're trying to move the cube, um, not the main cube, this second cube right here, which is to the right. This is collections, by the way. This is collections. And then, um, so I selected it, and then I go back into this window here, and I press G, and I move it over. And I can move it to the side like that. Okay, so with that being selected now, um, uh, it as you can see, it doesn't have it doesn't have any nodes on the right. You see over here, the world is selected, and we have our cube selected, and nothing is is done uh, onto it. So we're going to press new, and that's going to add in automatically. A principle BSDF shader so that is like the simplest way I could really put it whenever even when you have a regular um, cube sometimes um, when you start the program um, I think it'll just show up with it as long as you have in this window shader editor selected okay shift F three for people on Windows, but I'm trying to gear this towards um, Mac users, Mac OS X users like myself. Um, so we're going to change this and put this color into blue. Just give it a blue. And another blue. And we should bring down the roughness and let's like make it metallic. Whoa, I, I know that peaked. I'm um, sorry. Let's make it metallic. Specular height. Yeah. I mean, all these are like. It depends on what you're doing and what what kind of um, what kind of material you're trying to make here um, with these type of settings. But with that being said, let's just go back into. Um, editor mode. Uh, let's bring this up. Uh, let's make it a little lighter, right? And then uh, I'm gonna quickly go into this and bring in. Yeah, that's bright. Let's grab it and let's bring it up a little bit more. That is very, very bright. Let me bring down the strength. Okay. You can also select the gray in the background and um, adjust that as well. Um, so right here with the line in it, this is the world node for, um, for the background. So you can use nodes, and this is, you see, it says background. Um, and we can change the color to black and just change it completely black. I mean, that looks pretty cool with the light bouncing off of it. It almost, um, see, this is like metallic, so there's some blue. See, it almost looks wet. <laughs> it's just bouncing off of this because it's shining so bright. The light is bouncing off of it. So there's a lot of like physics and stuff in here that's fairly cool. So let's, let's bring down that light. It's so bright. It's so bright. 
We're bringing down the light. Ooh, bring it down all the way. The sun is so hot. All right. So let's bring it down a little bit so we don't overexpose our camera here. And we'll make it a little orange. Right, like sunlight or something. Yeah. We'll leave it in white and then let's just make our background into white. So you can see it. I believe you can see it better like that. So shift obviously to go um, vertical and horizontal in place. But if you want to go 360, you let go of shift and just do it with your mouse. And um, if you've made sure your preferences and your settings are all done a certain way, then yeah, it'll work just fine. Okay, let's um, let's bring this out over here. And let's grab our light. Let's bring it to this side over here and rotate it. Let's point it over here. Rotate it again. See, I'm moving the light. I'm pressing R to rotate it, and I just grab it and stuff like that. So, go over here on the camera, and you see there's like a little bit of shading over here, but because it's so white, our background, let's just make it dark. So then we can see what the light is doing. Bring it over here on this side of the camera. There we go, you see where like the shadow moved. The shadow's moving inside that square. See, I'm just pointing it away from it a little bit and it gives it a nice bloom thing going on, but if I select it, um, this is all the specular roughness, so let's give it some roughness, let's give this some, some roughness, you want me to change it, you want me to change it, change the, the show, thank you Logan, I'm going to fix your, your iPad, okay, I'm gonna fix your pad pad. Mm. Where's the super readers? Look, another super reader episode. Yay! No? Let's see. Oh, the other thing is, let me see the mission. <laughs> damn, damn, that's super bright. But you can see right there, the emission shader is basically, I love the emission thing. It's just, it almost is like, it's like neon lights, you know? It's almost like neon lights, the emission shaders. I'm going to go to the edit mode real quick here and we have our box selected um our blue box let's grab it and let's move it a little over and then and shift and move to the side here and rotate this it's the side here all right so um oops, I, I selected some faces um let's select some edges real quick here and let's move this. Let's move this a little closer. It's a little close, too close. All right, so we'll just do this. All right, so I have this white bar selected, or let's just do this side right here. And you can see it over here on this side. So I have bevel selected. So with bevel selected, all I got to do is 
in plane, you see I have a, they give you a cursor. And so in the plane right here, I just kind of go like, just kind of pull it out, you know? So it starts from somewhere like that. So bevel kind of gives you like a little edge loop, I guess. Is, I, don't, I don't think that's right here because I think they use loop cut or they've used that word for something else. Um, I don't want to really like mess this up, but um, for you in understanding this, um, but basically bevel just gives it a little, a little edge. Nothing is exactly that sharp, you know, like like the rest of these edges. It's not as sharp as this. So something like this is is more or less what we would see in the real world. Um, so with anything like that, that's perfect for that and then um, you can do the same thing up here and then obviously select and pull it out to make it even bigger let's do it like that that's cool oh. it's weird shapes that I'm making kind of like what I did I guess last time <laughs> Uh, but I'm just seeing what you uh, like. I'm just showing what you guys can do and what everyone could do on here. Um, so then there's loop cuts, and loop cuts are basically when you're trying to like, like cut this in half, right? These are cuts that we can make. Um, basically, um, we can make little cuts everywhere. You can see. And then, um, and then I can just go over here and then put my cursor on there and then put, select the face there and, uh, click the insert button and then click out here and then kind of push in. All right. Let's make it like right there and let's zoom in real quick. And then I'm pressing control and then I'm just scrolling in and shift to move it aside. Um, so basically, you see I made a little window almost in here. And then obviously you can press the E button and extrude that in. Or when you press the E button, you could press the X, Y, or Z button and you can like extrude it in the way um, any of these axes goes uh, so let's just uh, let's just use that y, the Y axis and let's bring it in a little bit just bring it in just a smidge there that's cool and it gives it like a nice shade it gives it a nice little like window something Basically, so you can see um, what this program can do. That light is so bright. It needs, it needs to just be farther away from these things. But the, the thing is that I haven't really given these materials any kind of texture exactly. So the light is just bouncing off of them, which is why I... Uh, um, just made it all black in the background so you can see um, what the light does and color and how these meshes are reacting in the program especially with Eevee and Eevee and I put the ambient inclusion on so that you could see it just brighten up as well um, so you can see what it does because it just looks so cool off the camera look at that it's like a flare it's so cool it's digital <laughs> Um, so let's zoom out here a little bit and scroll around. All right. And then bring this up. All right. And then let's do the same thing here a little bit and zoom out. And select this light actually. Let's go to edit mode. Uh, into object mode, I mean object mode, and we'll move this a little higher. Oh. 
Not soon. And then we'll go over here and we'll take off the bloom. So it's not so like that. And then there's the ambient inclusion. It's fine. Yeah. If it's the bloom where that kind of happened, and that's fine. Like, I like that. It looks cool. It makes the video look a little different for you guys um, in comparison to everybody else's, I guess, <laughs> um, in this training. But it looks interesting, right? looks really cool so these are very basic little things that can be done um, and then the other basic key that you must know is um, since we're in object mode let me just go ahead and select all of these and let's just press X the letter X and then this button is going to show up right here delete and you can left click it right or press enter whatever have you and you can delete it. You could also do that with a light and a camera, but then you can also bring them in with Shift A. In Shift A, you can bring a mesh. There's a plane. You can circle UV sphere, a cone. You can even bring the monkey in. Um, this is their mascot. This is Blender's mascot. Look at that. Really cool. Let's um. This is cool. Let's let's do something with uh, with Suzanne with the Suzanne head. That's what her name is. So we're gonna grab it and bring her up in the air like that. Let's position the camera straight at it. And there we go. All right. So we go back to edit mode. And let's um let's object mode. Nope. It's gonna be in edit mode obviously. Let's subdivide it a couple times. So I'm right clicking and then I'm left clicking on to subdivide. So once I get that then I'm just gonna go to bevel. And then I'm just gonna click away, and then as you can see, ooh, if I go this way, look at everybody. <laughs> look at that. That's really crazy. Okay, so let's do a little interesting. That's very interesting. So it just it's beveling in reverse, obviously. So I'm gonna bevel in. Right, to smooth it out a little bit more and then um, and that would be it let's just leave it there and then we'll go to edit mode and we'll choose to whirl it doesn't have um, a node so we're gonna select for the Suzanne head we're gonna select one and open one up um, we can go in here and we can change it if we want uh, let's do a mission. Right. Oh, wow, mission's like super bright. It just doesn't, it's not going to show the detail of the face or anything like that. Uh, I would have to delete. Yeah, I would have to delete the, the light. Let's not do all that. Let's just put it back to principal F. Um, uh, BSDF shader. Oh, whoops, this is here. Regular one. You got to go to the regular one. There's one that says princi principal uh, BSDF for hair. I mean, for hair, everyone. Like, you can make hair. Like, human human hair in here. So, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Make it green. Let's make it purple. Cool. Purple. It's pretty cool. Let's leave it there. It's like, it looks like a blue purple. Let's leave it there. It almost has an ambient of blue. And it looks purple to me. Subsurface will give it some more purple. Alright, so um, uh, let's see. 
Let's give a shift A in here and let's input a equation. Let's give it a texture node because um, there's texture nodes in here. Hmm. So this is the brick texture and I can put that let's put that here and then control to scroll out and then move this over and then basically you can just go over here and then grab the color and then put it into the surface okay now hmm. let's do So it's pretty cool. Let's make this a little brown over here. That's just pretty cool width of the brick, you know? Ooh. That's a creepy looking monkey right there though. Oh, oh, oh. Cookie. <laughs> Cookie, yum, 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 yum. That's pretty cool. So you can scroll back here and bring it around. Let's just deselect it so we can see it. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, that's brick mode. Um, let's just select here and then you can press X to delete it. And then to bring it back to where it was before, where it was purple, I can put this right here. And see, you see, we got it all back. All right. And then, let's see. There's many things here. So, you know, now that we got kind of all that kind of maneuvered around, um, let's see if we can, like, talk about, like, these things up here. Okay. Um... Cause there's different even animation is cool let's see the shading the shading is kind of like this like the setup I uh, automatic I kind of have already but basically it just all these little tabs up here on the top just put you in that look the layout mode is where you start so then there's modeling mode and then modeling mode um, see sculpt mode type of deal and let's let's do some sculpting look at that I have that thing selected it's just to raise that a little bit more I guess his eyebrows a little bit more All right. and then Mm, what should we put? We should put something on the side over here, but let's just put this, I think, be interesting. Okay, so shift, spacebar, and then three. Uh, 
I don't think it's like going in that strong. I haven't done many sculpting. Let's see. Hmm. Let's make a ball. Whoa. Wow, I just do this section and I can make the head bigger. And he's got a big blop bump on his head. <laughs> On her head, obviously. Oh, it looks weird. It looks like a hair or something. Oh my god, I don't know what this is. But <laughs> you see, you can do that a lot, and you can just keep doing that and make it really pointy. Let's make it really pointy. Basically, yeah. Wow. I don't know what that is. It's a weird head. I'm an alien. Um. <laughs> So there's that as well, and so that's modeling. And then we got sculpting. Um, Suzanne's mouth right here. Um, let's see. So sculpting puts you right into this mode here. It looks like there's the radius here of how big it is. Ooh, it's really big. Big cheeks. Right there, I guess, in a way. Not that it doesn't already, these are just like, it's chin. <laughs> Big bumps on the chin, what are these, pimples, I guess? Pimples in the chin. You know, I guess that the cheeks are over here. But basically the radius of um, your, your modeling. Um, there's this thing too. There's just a lot of these things may not work for this type of mesh um, with the Suzanne head. Um, but that's fine. Let's just move forward. There's also the strength of it. Um, see the brush. Auto smooth. Plain offset. A lot of really interesting stuff here. Um, so let's move on. I may end up getting into this a couple of years from now. Uh, ooh, texture painting. So this is very, very interesting. So if you ever have a flat image that you want to project onto, um, let's say the Suzanne head here, um, you can basically um, upload it within here, um, open the image, right? Um, I don't know, let's just open any image. Um, oh, I wonder what this is. We'll see what this image is. Oh, really cool. So this is a screenshot here of um, these dudes. And this is all in 4K image. Okay, so... Um, all right, let's um, let's try it out. So there's the, uh, let's see if that worked. Um, okay, I'm doing this wrong, but that's okay. Because that's not what this is going to stamp. So basically, you can move around the image here. We'll go more into like in depth, in, in depth on what um, each of these things may do down the line. Um, but right now, especially with uh, projects that I have coming up. Down the line, they'll cover a lot of these, these, uh, these tools and stuff like that. But we're just gonna give a light overview. 
So basically this, um, any image you put in here and you um, can project it and paint it onto uh, the Suzanne head or any mesh. Okay, uh, let's go to the shading. All oh, cool, Ducky 3D dropped something. Shout outs to him. I'm um, not sure if you saw that, but um, let's see, shading. So I'm guessing this is how light takes, I mean the, the mesh takes in light from the outdoors and stuff like that. So you can do all that in there and then there's animation. So animation is pretty cool. Yeah, Logan can talk very, very much so. Um, let's see what, um, let's do some animation real quick. Now we're in here. As long as that we're in here now, I think we can do that. Um, so I'm gonna go, yeah, it's an object mode, select Suzanne head, and it's already in object mode. It's gonna put you all automatically in the mode that, uh, that you're supposed to be in. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna press I and I'm going to um, click right here location, rotation, and scale. So now on the bottom here, as you can see, it automatically places this right where it already is, that this is where it starts. That this is where the Suzanne head starts. So we're gonna scroll around and we're gonna move around, right? And then we're gonna move up ahead about, hey, what are you saying no to? Look, come here, you want me to, you want to see this animation? This is cool. Dad. A what? Dad. Dad. Can you get some eggs on you? Cool, you eat your food? Come here, sit right here, look. look. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. I'm I'm Logan. <laughs> no screaming. Hello. Yeah, that's a that's a monkey. So we're gonna make the monkey move. We're gonna make the monkey move. Monkey. Are we gonna make the monkey move? A monkey. Yeah. Monkey. Hold on, no screaming. Shh. Monkey. Yeah, the monkey. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna move it 60 frames. 60 frames right here. Monkey. And then we're gonna go like that. And then we're gonna monkey. press G. I'm doing this with one hand while I hold the microphone. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way away from camera view. Okay? And then, and that's gonna be, oh, 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 you're okay? Eh, he's running away. Okay. Um, so basically, the Suzanne had moved to put the microphone down. So I'm pressing control and scroll out so I can see where the Suzanne head had moved um, away from uh, the camera's point of view. And then, um, so let's just... I'm going to snap it back to the where it is, and we'll just like animate for the camera. So um, grab with the G, right, and bring it on this side here, and then press the Z axis so we can see, and press shift. And then I'm gonna press G again to move it, and we're gonna move it, her like this, like so. And then we're going to go to the Y, and then we're gonna grab and move up, side to side, move up. And then grab and move a little bit, and there we go. So slightly evenly framed at least. Logan decided to ride his bike around now. So now we're going to press I. And then we're going to press again and click location, rotation.
rotation scale. And we press that right now. And then we move the cursor back. We can go over here on the bottom. This is everything right here. You could even press um, um, this button over here, auto keying, uh, automatically keyframe insertions, insertion of objects and bones. Um, so I'm gonna move this back over here so you can see it move back the way it did. And you can press play and then it moves forward. And in 60 frames, it's gonna be that. And in 60 frames, it'll be that close to the camera. So then I could press this to restart. Look at that. Very cool. Very, very cool. So we just made a little light animation. Um, so I'm sure with this alone, I might chop this up and just put this in a little video itself. Um, but this is a light animation that we just did right now. And you can see how that all worked out. Over here. Logan, over there you don't play. Why you gotta close that? Leave that open for Zion. Oh, you're closing it? So you could ride your bike. He, he wants to ride his bike around the house. I'm sure you've heard, heard that. Be nice. If not, it's Oda Mimi time. If you're not nice, it's, it's not Oda Mimi time. Right? Okay. All right. So we got the animation. And then there's even the rendering. Um, this is the rendering part of this. Let's just pause it here. Put it to the beginning. And then there's compositing. Um, this one you gotta have like nodes and everything like that and bring that in. That's gonna be a whole nother video including uh, the motion tracking. Um, there's scripting which is basically you can code everything. These are the codes for <laughs> basically all the, all the stuff I just did and animation and everything like that. All right, and then you can add here with this plus sign. With this plus sign, you can add anything that you want to do. Um, here is uh, VFX, so you can do masking, compositing, motion tracking, and rendering all in one program. And these are things that are free. This is completely free. It's way freer than any Adobe program you can tell me about. Even though I use Adobe Premiere for editing right now, um, eventually, I won't be anymore. I might jump into DaVinci Resolve. Let's um, let's get back into the layout mode here, and um, you can see everything in here. And let's um, let's do something interesting. Let's uh, shift A, and we're gonna bring in a text. All right. Um, Let's see. Let's delete Suzanne. Bye bye, Suzanne. We're going to press X and delete again. And uh, let's see. Hmm. Am I even typing anything in there? No. Okay. All right. So let's do this again. Shift A. Text. All right. There we go. All right. So let's just press the Z up here and so we can be exact. And we can press Shift. Kind of do that. Move it around, you know what I'm saying? And bring that closer. So let's zoom in real quick. All right, and then we'll go to edit mode. And then in edit mode, it already gives you this here so then you can type in what you want to type in. So, um, let's type in all caps and we'll put in green light. 
all in one word. Uh, that's just what I do in this uh, in this channel. It's not really one word, but I put it as one word in this channel because that's what we do here. We're green light. <laughs> so then we can go back to edit mode and uh, let's do this. Be in the Z axis a little and then we'll go to the Z axis and um, I'm going to uh, press, um, look at my cursors over here, I'm going to press um, R and then I'm going to move it up onto the blue axis like that. See that? Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, you can also like, here you can also, um, well, not that I hear, I've seen it basically you can get like text online and like fonts and stuff like that and add any one you like within this program. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's called free fonts something online. But I'll include it in the description below of this video. Um, so now that we're doing the green light name, let's um, let's uh, go to edit mode. Whoops. And mm. Mm, let's go to object mode. And let's give it a principal BSDF shader. And we'll make it green, obviously. Darker green. And we'll give it a light green in here, too. All right, and there we go. And now it's green, you can see it in there. And this is just a basic text uh, if we go to edit mode again and then highlight the whole thing let me see what we can change as far as like if you look on the right over here the text uh, you're going to see a little letter a in green and that's our, our thing here so once we get into edit mode and or um, object mode you can go in here and uh, let's see you can change, <coughs> excuse me, Woo, sneezed. So, shape, type text, and here we go, font. So um, you can change a little bit of the font and you can add folders, you can open font. You see anything you press here, then you open the font. You can go in this window, and you can go over here to the left and go to your desktop if you dropped it into your desktop, and then press open font, and it'll do that. It'll drop it in right away, and it'll turn right into the, um, this would just turn right into whatever font that you downloaded. Um, it'll just turn it into that. Uh, so we'll make it bold, and we'll italicize it, and see... That didn't exactly work because this is like you get into the material and stuff like that because this is basic like this. It's basically the the main font that it is is just yeah. It's just like this. So um, let's go to object mode. And let's touch this again and modeling. And let's just let's extrude. Doesn't let me just extrude it. Edit mode. Yeah. 
So there's this, um, since we're in here, there's this other thing that's pretty cool because I've been sitting around kind of like figuring out what I'm going to do next. But there's this. Really, really dope. So basically this is... <laughs> Look at that mess in there. Okay, so this is um, like their grease pencil. So it's in blue. As you can see, it's in 3D space. It just draws wherever, wherever you know, we want to draw it. So then I'm just gonna give it this, like that, and let's see how well that works out. And you can see that that happens. All right. Okay, so I'm going to just object mode and just select everything and delete it. Boom, just delete that. Delete it. And delete. Okay. Still this dot right there. Don't know how to get rid of that. I think the grease pencil is just a little um, something that I haven't really messed with too much. But so far I've like created um, some effects and stuff like that and, and modeling um, a couple little things, even text. So it was just kind of weird that that didn't let me do what I thought it was gonna let me do. Um, you know, like extrude it out and make it thicker and make it into a more 3D uh, object. Um, maybe with um, maybe with um, like when I add a font and everything like that, that would have happened with that. But um, let's. Uh, Let's move forward. So we've covered a lot of like basic stuff, I believe. Um, let's see if we can add, let's talk about the video editing capabilities. <clears throat> so right here, this is the timeline. To me, in a weird way, it looks like iMovie instead of like a Premiere Pro. Um, but it has a feeling like it could almost have this uh, Final Cut X thing going on because to me Final Cut X looks a lot like iMovie and feels a lot like iMovie even though it does a lot of really um, professional things now um, way easier way easier than most um, programs from what I hear to the users that use Final Cut X it's not so easy for me I, I like Premiere Pro it reminds me of Final Cut 7 <laughs> so yeah we're gonna just go in here then. And let's go into green light and let's see. Oh. Okay, let's go back. All right, so, implications. Um, Is 
So iMovie. Let's bring in a film in here, a video. We're gonna bring in a video in here. Put a desktop. Where's the okay? So this is like a music video set, and let's just select this. So you see this is how we're dropping in a video. So the video is in blue, is a blue strip right here. And then in the green strip, we have the audio. Okay, and you can see here, you can move it around. And you're gonna wanna snap it back. Cause it doesn't have, this is another thing that I have a problem with, um, but this is good when it it's okay. It seems okay when it when it works with um, motion tracking. Um, if you put a, a still, like if you put a video in here, um, it's uh, it doesn't tend to like be in the right sequence. Um, it tends to let's just play it out. See, this is like. A 4k file we're watching a 4k video on here so it's just kind of rendering you see on the bottom here it's just you got to let it play look how smooth the orange part is let's start over here. So you can do simple cuts and edits. Um, you could use the knife tool, which is K, because K start. I mean, knife starts with the letter K, and not um, C. But uh, C is cut for a, a shortcut for in Premiere Pro. But this is K. You got to press the letter K. So we'll use the space bar like normal, and then we'll press the letter K. And it's getting there. See when I use the uh, 4K videos and stuff like that because the video is selected, uh, only the video got cut. Um, but I can also select the audio and press K and it'll cut there too. So these are simple cuts. Um, as far as like transitions and everything like that, um, let's see. There's not really uh, time and source. This is the source of video. Time we could also like adjust on the bottom here, like how long how long the timeline we need, like how long of a timeline do we need, and how long is the video, um, much like um, Avid. Um, Avid does that a lot, like it's very fixed and specific, you got to be very specific with your cuts and I would expect that with this. Um, since I like to maneuver, um, I love to maneuver my videos around um, the sequence uh, just so that I could experiment and get the best edit that I can out of the videos and um, workflows like this slows me down a little bit doesn't let me do those experimental parts without losing time um, so with that being said it's a reason why I use Premiere Pro right now until they um, make this better but for right now for um, independent filmmakers like yourself and um, and or you know um, CG artists just artists in general 
this is a great tool to be able to have all around because anything you even make in here you can export it um, and be able to export it out of a, a, a live 3d um, model you know um, like a, out of 3d plastic uh, with a 3d printer uh, you can really do some cool things like that and you can edit videos and you can um, edit them in 4k and and export them in 4k as well um, so with that being said let's um, do a little exporting real quick um, and this goes for anything you're doing in blender um, it's always gonna be up here but let's go to the layouter and uh, what we have here is um, put the microphone down for a second is Well, we don't have basically anything in here, so um, we can basically just drop in. Let's just shift A. Hey, Logan. We're going to shift A and bring in a mesh. We're going to bring in a monkey, the monkey head, right? And there's the monkey. We'll just leave it like that. So with video, with video and anything to do with any exporting in Blender, we're going to do a quick export real quick and let's see um, what we get here. <laughs> so right here where it looks like a little DSLR camera, the back of the DSLR camera, you can select um, EV or Cycles Render. And Cycles and EV both um, deal with light in a different way. Um, cycles, you could be a little bit more... Uh, specific as to the GPU or the CPU and be more specific as to what it's attacking. I, 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 I'm i st been sticking to EV even though it, it um, may take a little bit more. It could take a little bit more uh, room, but um, sorry, excuse me, um, but that should be fine. Uh, it'll come out the best render you can get. Um, with EV, just try it with EV. It looks amazing. Um, so here are the resolutions, um, X and Y axis. So this is where you could change it to 4K if you want. You could change this up here, 3840, and then um, um, the other is uh, it's like uh, 2640, I believe. Um, yeah. I think that is right. No, it's a 26, uh, 2160. Uh, so the X axis would be 30, 3840 and then 2160 on the Y axis for um, just so you can get the, the 4K uh, quality of any render or anything like that. Um, so quickly going down here in output um, we could pick where we want to have it dropped off at so I'm going to click the desktop I'm going to let it accept it at the desktop up here so on the bottom here after you do that then you leave everything alone and you look at file format you see where it says PNG right I'm going to click RGB uh, I don't know why it was RGBA but um leave it like that and then compression it says in 15% um, just leave it like that as well so in here where it says PNG is where we're gonna do some uh, some changes and where you're gonna do your most of your um, exporting changes so there's JPEG and PNG so when you're exporting your video so that you can do motion tracking um, they say for you to select each either one PNG is a larger file size so um, remember that and then, um, so, but right now we're going to do like a little video, right? We'll click this and then we'll click FF MPEG video. And that's going to be the MP4 settings for that. Um, let's see, there's, there's processing, the metadata, and everything else is good. Just leave everything else alone from there 
Um, go over here. And we can even, you see you could change the depth of field here in the under where it says EV. And so far we could just leave it like that. Um, this 30 frames per second. I like to just keep it at 24 frames. Okay. And then um, we just click the render up here. And then we could render it. So so let's see let's um let's do a, an animation with this again okay so um, we're going to object mode all right so Bring this out. All right. All right. So. All right. So. All right. We're going to move the Susan, the Suzanne head, and we're going to. Um, let's just click I from where it is right now and we choose location, rotation, scale. I normally just do it all. Um, you can select each one at, on its own, but I just do it all for right now so you learn. Um, and then you don't miss anything. So any kind of animation you do on, on the Suzanne head, uh, it'll automatically do it and you didn't forget to select uh, one of these other, um, um, things that need to move, uh, that the uh, blender needs to uh, keep track of when it moves. So then we're going to move this a little forward. We'll go 60, 60 frames. And then I'm going to press R to rotate. Whoa. Right? Oh, let's keep going. Let's rotate all the way around. And then... I want to, oh, let's do this. Let's go to the Z and then we'll rotate facing the camera. A little too, so we'll do a couple things there. Um, let's go to Y and then rotate so it's like looking at you like that, okay. And then we're going to press I. And we're going to press I again. Rotation, location, scale. So we're going to we're going to press this over here and go back and start from the beginning and then watch it to the left over here. <laughs> so the video is playing too. So basically, Blender thinks I'm going to add this into the 4K video. So, which is why it's doing that. And let's see what we come up with when it comes to um, the render. So let's just do a quick render. And let's render this out. <clears throat> so you go to render up on the top left next to file and edit and it says render bless you and then we have render animation you click that and then it should do that which i figured it was going to render um the video not the so um, here you can just press control and scroll out to a little bit so it's not so close like that but basically this is what it's doing it's rendering it out and then in a little bit when it's done um, on the bottom, well, when you have um, your little, what you might call it, uh, um, your little blender logo, the little uh, icon, I guess, some, it'll have like a little bar of when it's finished and it's almost there anyways. 
So it's rendering now, right now, it's going to be in 1080p. I'm not doing a 4K render um, because it'll be too much. Um, I might have to delete one model that I had because I've done some changes to it. So I could re render it out in 4K, in beautiful 4K, and be able to composite it into my music video. Um, so this will automatically show up as a h.264 file onto your your desktop automatically so with that being said i'm just gonna press x here and this and and kind of get this done this is also another window this is a window that just opens up um so you can exit out here and this, that's how you do it if you don't want to, if you want to stop it from what it's doing. So I'm going to bring Here we go, encoding. So here's where you can do your encoding and stuff like that. So in this section over here for, um, for this section over here for exporting, um, you also got to click right over here it says encoding press encoding and then you can scroll down and you have your option to select h.264 which is what i recommend uh, medium quality is fine it has no audio um let's see in the metadata we don't have to press any of these we don't have to click any of these things just make sure that h.264 is selected and or MPEG-4, I believe, is fine too. So let's try it again. Let's choose MPEG, let's just choose the H.264 codec is the best thing you can do. And then do it again. And let's see, scroll out. First thing I'm going to say is basically, um, I hope you enjoyed um, all these little uh, fundamental things um, that you need to learn about uh, with Blender. And um, I hope that the chopped up version is a little bit better for you. Um, this version's a little um, long <laughs> and not very condensed, so it'll be more condensed down the line. And um, I'm most likely I'm not even going to leave this up live. I'm going to probably just put it up on private and then export it out and uh, and edit it on my own. Um, so welcome. <laughs> if uh, this is, um, I believe, like I'm going to have to probably do some intros for this as well. So if you did watch all this, then, you know, you got lucky and you got to see bunch of like um how it works for me to uh, get all these things done and how long it takes so now um it's just finishing the exports just finishing yeah here it is and then so we basically exported it and it's all done and it doesn't even take all that long either so let's see bless you bless you logan let's go back here so the render is done but um it didn't render this out it rendered what i had in the video editing port here so basically just do one thing at a time don't do this like I did and have like 30 things happen at once but if you like all these if you like all these blender if you like all this blender talk please let me know in the comments below um, and please don't forget to hit the notification bell and uh, also and like the video as well and I'll be seeing you here next week when we do like Blu-ray reviews, reviews and filmmaking uh, tutorials as well as um, making of, of um, behind the scenes for music videos that I either direct or 
or do a behind the scenes of other music videos. So thank you again, and I'll see you soon.